Hey coders and welcome to episode 3 of our Data Studio Service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In today's episode we're going to be covering the third required step into building out a community connector which is to define the schema. Now in case you're unfamiliar with what a schema actually is, let's give a quick simplistic definition of it now. So I like to think of a Google spreadsheet and whatever data you put in that first row that gives context to the rows of data that follow it is your schema. Now this is just the start of a schema. You also have to specify the fields data type. So you can't just say my schema is date ticker price. You have to say my schema is date which is of type date ticker, which is of type string, and price, which is of type number. Now, with Data Studio, and this doesn't really apply outside of Data Studio, but with Data Studio, you also have to specify whether each field is a dimension or a metric. And the easy way to remember if it is a dimension or a metric is if you can perform mathematical operations on its data. So let's take an example. If we look at ticker in column B, then we would specify this as a dimension because we can't really sum up BTC with ETH or we can't really take the average of those two. They cannot be summed. This is a categorical variable. So we are going to label this as a dimension. However, with column C with price, this will definitely be a metric because we can take the average of these numbers, we can sum up these numbers. This is going to be our quantitative variable. Now column A with date, this is kind of a tricky question because you could have an argument that it is a dimension or a metric. But for this example and for this video, we're going to label date as a dimension because we're not really going to be summing up our dates or taking the average of our dates. So again, for this use case, we're going to label date as a dimension. So the top five methods which we are going to be showcasing in today's demonstration are new git schema response, git or set fields, new dimension, new metric, and finally set type. So let's head on over to the code and start building out our schema. In episode one, we handled authentication using the required function git auth type. And then in episode two, we set its configuration using this function right here called git config. Now the last thing that we're going to need to do before we actually get the data itself and present it on the data studio dashboard is to define its schema using this function right here called git schema. So let's just remind ourselves of where we are at within the data studio UI. Again, we are trying to add a data source to our project right here. And that data source is going to be connecting to the Nomix cryptocurrency data API. So we have gone out and created our own custom community connector and called it Nomix right here. And if we click on this, then first it's going to authenticate us. And then after it has successfully authenticated, then it's going to prompt us with any additional configuration. And we are going to select US dollars as our currency of choice. Again, we've seen this in the previous two episodes. But now if we hit this add button, then it's going to say no fields were found for this configuration. And this spinny wheel of death is going to keep spinning on ad infinitum. So let's go and check out our executions. As you can see, this function get schema did indeed get called, but since it's empty, nothing was returned. And that is why we are getting this spinny wheel that will continue on forever. All right, so then let's build out this function right here, get schema. So this function is going to return a schema response. That is what is expected. So let's, let's return that right now. We'll say return. And then in order to build out a schema response, we need to first access our community connector right here, which we have to find all the way at the top as a global variable right here. And then again, we're going to need to create a new schema response object. So we'll say new get and then here it is right here, new get schema response. So that is going to return for us a get schema response object. 
And then we are going to need to, now that we have that object, we are going to need to set the fields for our schema. So the method to do that is very simple. It's just set fields right here. And it, and it, it requests or it requires one argument as we would expect, which is the fields itself. But this field is going to be a data studio app dot fields object. And then after we do that, then we can build out this schema response and return that object like this. So how are we going to build out our fields object? Well, we could build it out within the get schema function itself, but a more popular way of doing it and a smarter way of doing it is to create your own custom function. You can call it whatever you'd like, but I'm going to call it get fields. And then to return that fields object from the get fields function into the set fields method right here. So I'll just say get fields right here. I'll call it using the parentheses right there. And so this needs to return now a fields object. So let's build that out right now. I'll declare a new variable and I'll say that is going to be const fields equals and then to create a new fields object, you need to get your community connector out again and say get fields right here, cc dot get fields. So this is going to, if you saw that, it's going to return for us a fields object, a data studio app dot fields object. And then what we can do is we can return that fields object, which will be accepted with this method right here, set, fill, set fields, and then that's going to be built out in our get schema function. All right, so this is now our schema, but we don't actually have, this is an empty fields object. So we need to actually add some fields to our fields object. So what fields are we actually going to add? Well, let's check out the Nomics API API documentation. If we access this endpoint right here for the currencies sparkline, then they have so helpfully and nicely provided a sample response for us. So again, if we access this endpoint right here from their API, then they're telling us that the response is going to look something like this. It's going to present us data for, with the currency, data from the timestamps and data of the prices of that cryptocurrency. So let's imagine that we are going to use all of this data. So that is going to be, these are going to be three perfect fields that we can use in our get schema function. So whenever you are building out your get fields function or your get schema function, you should always you should always input every single field or you should always create every single field that you would ever potentially use in this community connector. So every single field, like the largest field, the largest schema that you can make should be created within your get fields function. So we are going to then include every single one of these fields right here within our get fields function. Every single call within the get, get data function may not include data or may not request data for say prices or currency, but we should always include them within our schema, within our function get schema. So let's add these three fields right now. So the way to do that, we'll add the, we'll add the timestamps field first and we'll call it date. So the way to do that is we need to access our fields object, our empty fields object. And then again, we need to specify whether it's going to be a dimension or a metric. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to say fields. And again, we're going to, we're going to treat date as a dimension for this example, for this demonstration. So we'll say new dimension. And then we are going to first set the ID. So this ID is going to be the identifier of how we are going to access the data from this field. So it's always, you should always set an ID whenever you are adding new fields to your schema. So this, you can set whatever ID you would like to. I'm going to call it date as our ID. And then we will set the name. This is going to be simply date. And then you can add things like the description. You can add set set group or set formula. Let me add one more. I'll say set description. I'll say the date at midnight. 
And then the last thing, what you're going to need to do is to set the type. So this is setting the data type. So again, we've said that it is a dimension, but we're going to drill, we're going to need to drill down a little bit farther and actually set the data type. So to do this, we are going to access the, as you can see right here, it requires a data studio app dot field type object. So that is actually going to be an enum off of the community connector class. And if we access this enum, this interface right here, field type, and hit the period button, then we can see that we have access to lots of different uh, data types that Data Studio will accept. So for this, this dimension date, we are actually going to use the year, month, day data type, and then that is it. That is all you need to do for adding a new field. So let's do this two more times for the other two fields that we want to add within our schema. So after date, let's just do currency. It doesn't really matter that much, but that again, that will be a dimension. So we'll say for this one, we'll say ticker. And then for this, we'll say ticker symbol for the name. The description will be the ticker symbol. We're just going to be very concise for now, but you can always make this into a longer description if you want to. All right, so the type for this ticker symbol, again, these tickers are going to be of type string. If you see in the documentation, then this is a string right here. So instead of calling it a string, actually, though, how Data Studio calls it within their field types is text. So that's a little bit more uh, human readable. We know that it's going to be text. So we are going to say text. All right, so we have the date now, we have the timestamps, and we have the ticker. The last thing that we're going to need to add are the actual prices. So instead of being a dimension, we are going to say now new metric. Because again, with prices, you can sum up your prices, you can average your prices. This is a number which you can do mathematical operations to. So the ID for this metric is just going to be prices. And then the name will also be prices. All right, the description will be the prices or the price of the cryptocurrency. And then the data type for prices, again, it's a dollar, but this will be recognized as a number. So we'll find number here is right here. And that is what we will set as our prices metric in our field. All right, so these are the three fields that we have just added into our fields object. And then we can just return fields as it is, as the object itself. And then that is going to be used in our set fields method, which is going to be built out to create our schema object. All right, so that is all we need to do for schema. So let me save that and then update our deployment now. And the way to do that again is to manage deployments. We'll hit edit, we'll hit new version. And then now we'll deploy. All right, so that has been uh, successfully deployed. So let's go back now into our community or in, into our data studio dashboard, refresh the page. It's going to prompt us to again, add a data, uh, add data to the report. So we'll go back to our Nomics community connector. It's going to authenticate. It's going to ask us for any additional configuration. Again, we're going to want to quote our cryptocurrencies in US dollars. And now if we hit the add button, then it says you are about to add data to this report from the NOMIC. So we'll say add to report. And now we have just added that data to the report. And it's going to give us a sample graph. Again, we have not actually built out the method get data. So we're going to get a system error. Once we actually build out this data or this function right here, get data, then it will actually access the API, send back the data, and then we'll get a nice pretty chart. Again, we'll do that in the very next episode. But there's one more thing I want to show. And that is if we go into this resource tab right here and click on manage added data sources, then this is the data source that we are using right here. So let me hit on edit. And then we can see now the, the, we can see the schema that we just made from our get schema function. 
and here is the type, the data type. Here is the description, again, that we set. And then here are the names of the fields that we set as well. All right, so I'll hit done. And again, that is going to be it for this episode. That's all you need to do for setting the schema for the function get schema. And then again, we built out this custom function get fields, which is a smart thing to do. And you'll see why once we start getting the data in this function get data. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. And be sure to check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description if you want to get some support for your own projects, your own software engineering projects. I would be happy to work on them with you. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you in the very next episode.